The iRacing iR04 has been the smash hit car of the summer in 2022 with packed grids all around the clock, crazy racing action and huge amounts of fun being had by all. But how does this latest addition to the service stack up against the elder statesman of the D-Licence open wheel competition, the much loved Formula Renault 2.0 and the USF 2000? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to the Limit of Artesia. My name is Gareth and in this video we're going to be comparing the three D-Licence open wheel cars against each other. We've not included the Skip Barber RT2000 as it isn't really in the same class as E3 as much as we do love it. The IRO4 was released for Season 2 2022 and as of Season 3 we now have fixed and open setup races meaning there is something there for everyone and you can race this car every hour, 24 hours a day. It's had rave reviews too, with many people proclaiming it to be the most fun car on iRacing. Unlike the IR01 from last year, this is not a fantasy car. It's a real, laser scanned Formula 4 car, quite possibly the Tartus T421. But to enable the car to be used by all of those different chassis and engine manufacturers in online competitions, the car has its generic name. All F4 engines are capped at 160 brake horsepower, although they vary between 1.4 litre turbos and 2 litre normally aspirated units. So in terms of general performance, this is roughly similar to the two older cars. The halo central column is removable in the option settings, which is handy for single screen drivers. When you've got triples or VR, you tend not to notice it too much. But the first thing you really do notice with this car compared to the FR 2.0 and the USF 2000 is just how strong the front end is. It turns in crazily well with none of the extreme understeer of the older cars. The brakes are amazing too. They will lock up on you if you mistreat them, but that's the same for all of these cars. In order to get a true sense of just how these cars accelerate relative to each other, let's have a six car drag race between them. Here we go then, USF 2000s and the IRO4s in the middle, Formula Renault 2.0s on the outside and it's a good start by one of the USF 2000s, possibly because I did the countdown. And here we go, looking at Mark in the IRO4, there goes one of the Formula Renaults on the left hand side. And it's the two IRO4s at the back of the pack then as we head up to the end of the straight. Kind of surprising to see them that far back. So in a straight drag race, the IR04 is not the quickest of these three cars, although obviously that might depend on the countdown and who gets a decent start and things. So not exactly conclusive, although we can definitely say the Formula Renault 2.0 is the fastest of the three in a straight line. But now then, let's have a little look about how these cars handle a one lap race. We're going to put the USF 2000s on pole, we're going to put the IRO4s in the middle and the Formula Renault 2.0s at the back. And that's just based off a bit of practice we did prior to the race to see what sort of lap times we were getting. Let's go down to the grid then. So the Jordan and the Toyota liveried USF 2000s leading them away. But it's a great start by Mark in the yellow IRO4. Trying to go up through the middle as they come through turn one for the first time. And the only time it's a one lap race. And he's on the outside as they head up to turn two. Then keep an eye on those Formula Renaults in the background. They are super quick compared to the other cars. IRO4 challenging around the outside then. And as they head onto the Parabolica down to the hairpin, he's in second place. That's Mark in the yellow IRO4. And we've got Merrin in the Wizards livery IRO4 a little further back. Still Ollie leading in the Toshiba uh, Toyota USF 2000. He's being challenged by Mark in the IRO4. And here comes Reese in the Formula Renault 2.0. So he's made his way up from the back of the grid. Challenging as they head through the fast right, heading towards Mercedes. He's past the USF 2000. Still Ollie hanging on somehow, but he's gone very wide through Mercedes. And that's let the USF. The IRO4, I beg your pardon, and the Formula Renault through. Oh, big snap of oversteer there by Mark. Just hangs on to it. 
and you see the order really changing now so we've got a Formula Renault 2.0 up from the back of the grid and into the lead and the second one is in third now IRO4 hanging on in second place through the stadium section we come then so the fastest of the three it appears to still be the Formula Renault 2.0 IRO4 is the second fastest round of lap and the USF 2000 in third. After all that fun at Hockenheim, I popped into Zolda on my virtual way back home and uh, thought I'd try these three cars around here just to give you an idea of how each car performs with the same driver. Blasting our way out of the final chicane then at Zolda in the USF 2000. And we're coming up to cross the start finish line now and we're keeping an eye on the coke hoarding on the right hand side as it ends that's our break and turn in marker for turn one and turning is really the one of the two critical factors with this car because you really need to set up your entry to carry the momentum through the corner and get on the power quite early on the exit so uh, because of the understeer is really quite savage in this car so you need to be very very mindful of how you set the car up for the entry of the corner now keep an eye on the brake indicator there as I get on the brakes for the Kleiner chicane and you see it go up to about 65% 70% of power not using all of the brake pressure available and that's because this car will lock up the moment you press too hard on the pedal so you need to be really really gentle and progressive with your braking and modulate it as the speed bleeds off or as it will lock up later in the braking phase as well so these are kind of the two most important things when you're driving the USF 2000 set the car up early for the turning of the corner and manage your braking as well you see a little snap of oversteer as we came through the hairpin you will get a bit of that as well but it's quite easy to catch and you can sort of chuck the car around quite nicely and we're coming up to finish the lap then through the final chicane and hard on the power keep an eye on the top left hand side to see the time and it's a 131.480 now here we go then with the formula renault 2.0 it's the fastest of the three cars the only one with seven gears in the gearbox and you can see the difference then as we come through turn one only dropping to fifth gear and using a lot of the curb there through turn one now through turn two again running a bit too wide there and taking a bit too much of the curb on the exit all three of these laps set using the baseline of uh, baseline setup of the cars just to try and keep it even because I didn't have a setup for all three of them coming down to the first chicane then and again the brakes on this car you've got to be quite progressive with them similar to the USF 2000 um, you can brake a little harder early on though compared to that other car and again it does have a quite bad understeer particularly in the high speed corners but if you watch our six tips on how to go quick with the Formula Renault 2.0 video you'll know that you can just lift off to get the weight transfer over those front wheels and get good turn in performance down to the chicane uh, the hairpin I beg your pardon and blasting out only one chicane to go to complete the lap then and you can see just how good this car is at picking up speed and blasting down the straights probably the trickiest of the three to really max the performance out of but when you do it's a very very satisfying feeling indeed there we go a 129.692 onto the IRO4 and here we are with the IRO4 then coming out of the chicane and starting our lap and listen to that engine note with the whistle going on behind us that's our biggest clue we talked about the different engines that might be that are available in real life uh, that whistle I think is the clue that this is one of the turbo options And you can see with this car you really throw it into the corners and I think this is what gives it that fun factor and makes it uh, such a popular choice of car because you can you can start racing really quickly with the car it doesn't take huge amount of practice to get on top of enough to have a race look at this through here smacking the curbs and just correcting and gathering it all up on the exit 
obviously if you want to get to the the level of the fastest car drivers with this car then it will take a lot more work but certainly compared to the formula renault 2.0 which takes a, a significant amount of effort to, to sort of master and get on top of because it's quite a delicate car where you need to be very precise with it and we've talked about the USF 2000 with you have to drive around the understeer and the and the sort of savage brakes but this one you uh, it just feels like you can get in and chuck it around really easily the biggest thing to worry about is sort of snap oversteer where you're just carrying too much speed and suddenly the back end just gives up on you but look at this just yeah little oversteer into the corner smack it off the curves and blast out the final chicane and cross the line for a 131.213 so there you go guys the three different open wheel options in the d-license bracket the formula renault 2.0 is the fastest car but the one that requires the most finesse and practice to get the best out of it it's still got a lot of supporters but you'll have to find the right time slot to get a big grid the USF 2000 is the slowest of the three, but not by much, and is the only one to feature ovals on the schedule with rolling starts and 15 minute races. The IR04 has killed participation though with many races no longer going official. It's a big shame as it's still a great fun car, and it's actually the one I raced most in Season 3 2022. The IR04 is definitely the most fun of the three out of the box. The way you can chuck it about and still keep pointing roughly in the right direction is absolutely brilliant. It's also the car where you're going to be racing more people with the same ability as you due to its current huge popularity. So while I would always say buy the car you want to drive in 2022 and beyond, my choice would be the IR04. Hope you enjoyed the video, please like it if you did and consider subscribing. And if you'd like to race with the LOA, come say hi on our road or oval discords. Bye for now.